Nope. There we go. And Fran, did you did you hear the announcement that it was recording? Yes. Okay. That. There we go. Okay. So as I was saying, I am Antoinette LaGrosse and Amanda Crawford is here with us today as well, talking about activities for crossing the midline. One of the many things that I love about the Montessori method is it is chock full of activities that are for math or language arts or practical life, um, grace and courtesy that will have your child crossing the midline as part of that learning. Okay, so let's start off with some of those basics and I am just going to go ahead and Set one other thing here. Amanda, what does the video view look like for you? Oh, I have mine just on a small screen up at the top. I'm there we go, having a little difficulty. Okay, so they should be pinned now. Okay, so what happens when a child isn't crossing the midline very well? Well, they're going to tend to use both hands equally in tasks like handwriting or cutting with scissors, coloring. And in doing so, you may notice that their movements are awkward and that they're moving the body position itself uh, so that they don't end up crossing the midline with the hands. And so instead of, you know, moving their hands and arms, they move their trunk. Okay. Uh, and then this is going to have an impact on the efficiency of all of their gross motor skills, as well as the development of their do dominant hand. And it's really affecting the bilateral coordination in the brain. Um, and you may find that it impacts the learning, the social skills, their play, their ability um, with self-care, even things as, as simple as uh, dressing. Okay, so what is crossing the midline? Well, crossing the midline refers to moving the body, the, as I mentioned, the hand, the arm, the foot, the leg, across an imaginary line that runs down, you guessed it, <laughs> the midline, the center of the body. So moving you know, across that, uh, whether with the hands or the legs, feet. Um, a, crossing the midline does also refer to twisting the body in rotation around that imaginary line and leaning the upper body across the middle of the body. So twister is a fun game that would entail a lot of crossing the midline. Simon Says is a really popular early childhood game that you can do a lot of body movement that has them crossing the midline. Uh, and then it, it's really a simplified way of looking at it, that line, but it is a great 
thing to keep in mind. And it's something that you can look out for, for your child, that when they get close to that middle point, if you see them instead of um, reaching across, if they start to rotate their trunk so that they don't need to reach across, then you want to make that metal note of encouraging them to indeed go ahead and do that because it does affect so many of those basic developmental skills that affect those both fine and gross motor tasks. You know, and for most of us, it is one of those skills that we do constantly throughout the day, and we don't really give it a second thought, and we want it to become that for our child as well, so that it is just automatic in their motor movements. Because, you know, imagine that, you know, the processing power that it takes the brain to do something like open a door because that is going to cross that midline, tying your shoes, getting dressed. If you have to devote an enormous amount of brain power to doing those basic things, you're going to get mentally fatigued and it's going to impact your ability to do more complicated activities. It's kind of like learning your math facts. You know, being able to have your math facts become automatic in mathematics frees up that processing power in the brain to do more advanced math. Okay, so this is gonna make those basic functions like cutting, getting dressed, tying your shoes less awkward. So what can you do at home with your child? And crossing the midline, by the way, it is something that you see in, you know, a number of different special needs. And so it does seem to, um, you know, cross those lines. And it's not just one learning issue where you see that being you know, a component of it. But even if your child has not been diagnosed with any specific special need, making sure that they are indeed efficient in crossing the midline is going to help them in a lot of different ways. So one of the materials that is wonderful, and this is actually used in occupational therapy, and that is Play-Doh. Now, if you are Play-Doh averse, like I am, and are not thrilled with Play-Doh in your house, I'm gonna give you a little tip and that is uh, a tray. And the tray is important for me for a couple of reasons. Um, if you give your child a tray on which to use their Play-Doh, so here is just a blank tray, that is good where you don't have a pattern uh, to me, it gives a more blank slate mentally. Uh, you could also use a divided tray. Sometimes you can get these for free from schools or restaurants, cafeterias that are, are changing those out. This is nice because you, the child can have colors and it, it helps them to keep them separate, their tools, their workspace. Uh, Sometimes my kids like to use printed trays, but the tray is going to make cleanup very easy. So just like you have your work mat that helps to focus attention, defines the workspace and makes cleanup easier, the tray is gonna do that same thing. For me, I am actually um, gluten intolerant and I have a skin reaction to wheat, so which wheat, is in Play-Doh, by the way. Uh, there are gluten-free versions, there are gluten-free recipes that uh, you can make, so that can be an entire uh, another activity to do with your child. Mixing, by the way, that is going to be something that crosses the midline. The hands have to work in coordination, um, and both of those are crossing that midline. 
Okay. Uh, and again, most of you already have it around the house and kids can use it with either just their hands as well as a lot of household objects using as tools for cutting, rolling, um, and manipulating that. It's something that is used in occupational therapy and it has many layers of benefit, such as it crosses the midline. So that's gonna be you know, that main point that we're looking at today, but it's also strengthening hand-eye coordination, it's improving hand muscle tone, strengthening uh, the arches of the hands. And muscle tone is something that you'll see often in a, a host of different special needs concerns as well. So activities that improve that muscle tone are really beneficial. It's developing fine motor skills and precision of the um, grasp. And it's promoting that bilateral coordination, which, you know, when they're using both of their hands together, um, they can start off by rolling a ball. And in doing that, it's working both of those hands together, rolling that into a rope. They can press it out into letters. That's something that we're doing in the language arts kit A, or they can make all sorts of things. Uh, we had sent out back at Mother's Day an idea for with modeling play, um, creating a heart keychain for mom. So that was a, a fun hands-on craft that becomes a keepsake, but it was also something that was crossing the midline and doing all of these other benefits for the child. So this is something you have at home and if not, you can make it out of materials that you already have. And then just remember the tray for helping to keep it a lot neater and less messy. And this is another one of those activities that sure, it can be Play-Doh or it can be air dry modeling clay, baking modeling clay. And then this becomes an activity that kids of all ages will enjoy. So just tweaking that a little bit to make it age appropriate for your child. Maybe they're studying geography and they're going to create a, a clay model of the earth or all of the different continents. They could do you know a three-dimensional model or a flat uh, model of the oceans and continents creating a um, map puzzle out of modeling clay. So a lot of things that you can do with this for multiple ages and it will have all of those benefits. One of the other things that um, Schiller Learning does in the language arts curriculum, language arts kit A, is the quinoa tracing. Now Montessori does sand tracing. Uh, Schiller Learning swaps out the, the sand for quinoa, and we're using the lid of the movable alphabet, and you just fill this with enough quinoa to just cover the bottom. You can see there that when the kids are tracing, it's not really deep. You don't want the quinoa super deep or else it'll fall in on itself. But this is one of those things that, you know, we're using it to help kids learn the shape, sound, and letter identification, but it can be used for spelling words. So if you have a child who's a little bit older, they already know their letter sounds and names, they can trace spelling words. They can trace math formulas. They can just trace you know, open-ended artistic activities. And this is going to have them crossing that midline. They'll be using their hands together, um, shaking that, holding it as they're tracing, smoothing the quinoa out, uh, cleaning up any of that quinoa that happens to leave the tray as they go along. We want to teach the kids to always be keeping their workspace neat and cleaning up as they go. 
practical life activities are another wonderful way of working on crossing the midline. So doing food preparation, uh, that's a very popular Montessori practical life activity that you can get. And we have a whole Tuesday at two session on getting your kids more engaged in the kitchen, all of the benefits of that on their to their learning. But one of them is that those activities, almost all of them are crossing the midline, improving fine motor control, eye tracking. Um, in Thursday night session, that's one of the materials that we're gonna be looking at, by the way, I mentioned eye tracking. It made me think of the uh, Montessori nomenclature cards, which are a wonderful material. It also has the kids crossing the midline, but it's going to be a fabulous uh, material for training that eye tracking and is really good um, for, again, special needs, but we're gonna be talking about that um, Thursday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern are our Thursday night sessions. Okay, now uh, you see there that with our light wood tray, we're using red quinoa. You probably have around your house a cookie sheet that looks something like this. And yes, my cookie sheet is a well-loved <laughs> uh, baking sheet. But with this, you've got that little bit of a lip that is gonna keep the quinoa in, but it's also going to uh, help you resist from filling it too much because it's not super deep. With this dark metal, uh, the tan quinoa that is in most grocery stores, you can you know, get a bag of it at your local Aldi for $3, is going to give you a nice color contrast, just like the darker quinoa with the light wood, with that darker metal, having that light quinoa is going to be really nice. Okay. And then they can trace in that, they can use both hands as they are tracing, by the way, or using the one hand to steady the tray as they're tracing with the other. And again, that's getting them to um, you know, use both crossing the midline, having those coordinate. Uh, practical life, by the way, one of the um, really popular quintessential practical life activities is having kids pour from one container to another. That's another really good fine motor control crossing the midline activity. But check out the other Tuesday too. If you have not subscribed to the Schiller Learning YouTube channel, you definitely want to go ahead and do that. So hit that subscribe button and you'll see there are a lot of different sessions that help with that. Okay, uh, working with geometric shapes, number of ways that they can work with those that are going to uh, work on crossing the midline, improving those skills, uh, they can sort, sorting them by color, sorting them by shape, and then um, patterning in a wide variety of different ways, or doing um, kind of like tanagrams where they're going to use those shapes and create new images out of those shapes. Wonderful open-ended exploration. Kids can spend hours exploring with those. Of course, in the Schiller Learning math curriculum that you are used in a specific way, but with all of your materials, whether it's Schiller Learning materials or others, once you are you know, finished with a lesson with those, Give your kids a period of uninterrupted exploration with them, uh, especially something like the geometric shapes. There's so much open-ended exploration they can do with them, but even things that have a more defined use, kids will come up with really neat off-label uses of things, and you'll find that they often um, 
just through exploring the materials, we'll discover concepts that we haven't yet formally introduced to them on their own. And that goes with the movable alphabet as well. Um, you know, give, having your child use, uh, put out onto their work mat, all of the letters that they've learned and just exploring, okay, what are all of the words that I can make with these? And with that, um, your movable alphabet is then going to be an activity where they are crossing the midline. You can put all of your, you know, the vowels they have learned on one side of the mat, the consonants on the other, and they are then using those to build and explore different words. Okay, uh, so the all of the Schiller learning manipulatives, by the way, are available individually. And bear with me just a second here. My screen is a little frozen. And does anyone have any questions at this point? Okay. Okay, and uh, Amanda, what is your favorite thing to do with the geometric shapes? I have to say this on my screen is my favorite, uh, creating all of those other pictures that you can do with those. That's one of my kids favorites too. They love to get those out and um, just see what they can design. We actually had one game that had different templates in it that you could build with on the shapes. So we used our Schiller learning um, shapes for that. <clears throat> and so that was. Yeah, and at convention, uh, That is uh, at convention. I like to have those out there. All we have those out on the table, and kids. I mean, literally of all ages as well as adults are drawn to those, and you know, exploring what they can create with them. Same thing with the uh, the quinoa. It's funny to see how many adults are drawn to the quinoa tray and just are compulsively putting their hand in and they love the feel of it. That uh, I always love to see what shapes they're going to make at conventions. And I mean, even with my own kids, you never know what they're going to design at the time or what they're gonna draw out in the quinoa. It's always really interesting to watch, stand back and watch and see what they want to do and make with it. Oh, and at a uh, convention, when everything is out in the booth, the other thing that I thought, and you know, because my mind, it was like the language arts, the grammar symbols out of language arts kit B, uh, with them being for language arts, I didn't even think of them for patterning. And kids have made amazing um, patterns and pictures with the grammar symbols as well, which you have those right here, by the way. <laughs> So let me show you those. And this is one of those things as someone had asked a question about, you know, crossing the midline being, you know, what age is it for? And it, is it for any age child, which definitely is, even though, you know, we are focusing on the younger years, but the grammar symbols, and this has all nine parts of speech. We've got um, noun, pronoun, adjective, article, verb, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. 
Uh, and they will use those. They'll actually pr place those grammar symbols uh, in the book, identifying each part of speech so that the child is going to see those grammar patterns emerge with the patterns of the shapes. But in doing so, they are going to tend to be using both of those hands to adjust and get them exactly into the position where they are. And so this is another great example of a Montessori material where the express purpose of it is teaching grammar and solidifying that, making it very visual and concrete in a way that other things are not doing. But in the process, they will be crossing that midline. Amanda, have any of yours um, started with the grammar symbols? Yeah, we, um, this was the first language arts that we did. And so Neelan and Reagan have both, well, in Bristol, they've all used the grammar symbols and they have been very helpful in helping them remember those, um, all those parts of speech. And then, like you said, the kids love to use those. Like <laughs> sometimes my, uh, my math shapes and my grammar symbols just all get mixed together get mixed and we have together. to sort them out at the end of the day um, because who knows what shapes and designs we're making out of them and that is you know one of the things that we like to remind people of is the you know having the kids put everything back uh where it is where it belongs uh at the end of the activity so that we ourselves don't need to do that and even that is going to have benefit and that would be one of those sorting activities that would mm -hmm. have them then crossing the midline. And then one of, this is really probably, you know, my favorite activity for crossing the midline. And that is the metal insets. So the metal insets, if you're not familiar with this material, this, we also have an entire session on this, uh, but there will be two pieces to it. And you've got the inset that has the uh, little knob there that they're going to be lifting. And then the, the frame that the inset goes into. So first they can use this for vocabulary building, shape identification, matching those, uh, the, even just the matching puzzle activity is going to have them crossing the midline. But then they're going to pair these with colored pencils and paper. Now, you can start off with paper that is sized the exact same size of the inset. And in doing that, they're going to have a lot of coordination between hands for placing the paper, placing the inset, uh, pairing them with colored pencils means that they're going to get used to the, um, the uh, appropriate pressure for using pencils. They can also be paired with crayons. You can see a picture, the picture on the screen here. This was one that was taken at a convention with, you know, again, this is one of those things that kids are drawn to and like to participate in that activity. And this I thought was a really nice example of how kids will come up with their own uses. And so here a little girl had paired the unit cubes with the insets and was using them as a guide for building and doing patterns. And the activity that she was doing with that was also crossing the midline. Uh, with the insets, they're going to do a variety of tracing. And with this example here, you've got where they are tracing and then pivoting. Uh, tracing, pivot, tracing, pivot, and you get something like that nice pattern there. They can combine shapes. Again, we've got a whole session on those. Look for that on the YouTube channel. Uh, just a little tip. This I think this had come up in a meeting, Amanda, where some people will cut their paper to size, yeah. right? 
And I forget how it came up, but someone mentioned about cutting the paper. And I little tip, I do not cut my paper to size. I simply press my metal inset down on the piece of paper and use it to tear. Uh, and then it'll go in half, so you'll get two pages out of a full sheet of paper. So you'll get uh, two of them that are this width, and then you're gonna end up with a little scrap paper. That scrap paper I love to use for equations uh, when the kids are working with the fraction circles or the, um, the decimal material and number cards. You can use those little uh, scrap sheets for creating equations to just keep with their materials. So when you have one of those lessons where you've got that list of you know 15 or 20, whatever it is, practice problems that go along with the presentation, that's another way of doing that. You can also use it with full sheets of paper and again, doing just open-ended artistic things. This is, you know, you can see a series of circles along with the oval that was traced that was inspired by a creation that a child had done at a convention. They did theirs better. <laughs> Amanda, what do you like to do with the insets? Uh, I love to have the free play with the sheets of paper and let the kids do their own designs. It seems to be one of my kids' favorite activities. They've made rockets and flowers oh, and neat. all sorts of things. And then the, the line drawing is a, a very basic skill with the insets. They'll do different uh, parallel lines as well as slanted lines. Oh, with the insets, by the way, with the guided tracing that they're doing, they're actually practicing every single stroke for all 26 letters of the alphabet. So it is an amazing handwriting manipulative that they just have a, a ball with. Um, I probably like the shading because it's just so beautiful. They'll do shading where they do light to dark or um, vice versa, or maybe dark all around the edges and then light in the center. Uh, just really beautiful. Okay, another activity that is going to help them with crossing the midline that is going to be balancing things um, and using both hands and getting those balanced, exploring those quantities. That is another one of those things that it's wonderful that once you introduce the activity with using the balance with the unit cubes or any other household materials that you have to just walk away and let the kids explore that and spend as much time as they like. And then as they are developing that number sense and understanding of quantities, they're also going to be working on crossing the midline. A lot of manipulative use is going to do that. Um, but you know, I wanted to highlight a couple of those. And then decimal material and number cards. This, first off, when they are building the quantities, uh, you'll find that they're going to be crossing the midline in constructing the quantities. And then as they, uh, you know, separate those numbers out and get the materials for those, placing them, bringing them down, switching out uh, when they need to do something like um, in this problem with the nine and four tens being 13, they're going to exchange 10 of those tens for a hundred flat in their bank. Uh, and so this is another of those activities that you can start at three or four years old, but kids as old as eight or nine are doing this. And it's one of those things that as they're developing their math skills, it's going to be fine tuning 
that crossing of the midline. Is there anyone who has had any um, particular challenges with their child and crossing the midline and anyone, you know, who is hesitant in, in doing that? Oh, and then one of the things, um, you know, with the decimal material, that was another that my kids would use for patterning and creating artistic creations and pictures tended to be stick figures doing battle. Um, Amanda, do yours have any off-label use for the decimal material? Um, they like to stack all the thousand cubes up and make a, they said they were making a robot out of it and oh. build with the hundred flats, whatever they can build up with those. Oh, and that reminds me, stacking the thousand cubes because we often get questions about storage and with the thousand cubes in math kit one you're getting 17 of those but they don't don't need to take up a lot of shelf space on a customer's blog i saw the most ingenious uh storage solution for those some years ago and that was she simply stacked them in a single column in the corner of the room so with the two walls, it was holding them up. It visually was not really, um, you know, impeding on the visual space of the room. It took up zero shelf space, but it was still just super convenient and accessible for the kids. I was like, that is just so perfect. And then with having all of those thousand cubes, not only can you make robots, but you can do four digit addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Um, so all we label you ours in oh, a milk crate. Uh, the thousand um, cubes, they all fit very nicely in one of those plastic milk crates that has the handles on the side. And then you can oh, carry them all over the house. That, it, oh, makes them very portable. That is a yes. great point. Um, and that was uh, years ago when I still had little fingers that I wanted to keep out of uh, things that they could eat like the unit cubes. Um, and I don't know what the official name of these are, but I used to call it the milk crate on wheels. Uh, you see them walking around con homeschool conventions very often, but that's exactly, my uh, decimal material, the thousand cubes would go in that main interior compartment. And then I had a fabric inset that then had pockets around it. So all the other manipulatives could go in the pockets and I would just keep it in our coat closet. And when it was time for math, I could take it anywhere in the house. We could uh, take it out back that was probably, we didn't have a dog at the time. So that was probably our favorite uh, place to do math was out back. Now I'm not so sure we'd be able to do that <laughs> <laughs> without uh, them ending up in the creek. But it was funny, you know, I always mention to people how durable the Schiller materials are. And I wish I had taken a picture of it uh, and had stood on the, the green thousand cube. And my first mm -hmm. reaction was, oh my gosh, we don't stand on our materials. And then I thought, wow, that's a great illustration of how durable <laughs> these are. And Amanda and I both, uh, if, if you were not able to uh, glean that from the conversation, we do use the Schiller curriculum with our kids. I've used it with my five since 2004. Although Ben is gonna be finishing up um, not too long from now, which I, I just can't believe it. So it's been really neat to see how these activities have helped, uh, you know, my five very different children in different ways, but, you know, just equally as helpful and enjoyable for each of them. And that Amanda, did you have any other activities that, you know, 
you have a, a personal fondness for for crossing the midline. I think you know the practical life things are particularly uh, helpful as well, and mm -hmm. you know that like the polishing, the sorting, the pouring. We do a lot of things in the kitchen, and the kids help me out a lot um, doing that. So the, they do a lot of the pouring and the mixing and and all of those type of activities. So you can get them to make homemade whipped cream and have better fine motor coordination. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and all of these materials and activities that we talked about are drawn right from the Schiller Learning Curriculum. Math Kit 1 covers pre-K through third. Language Arts Kit A is also for, you know, a similar, falls within that age, but it's going to be the first two years of language arts. So this is generally going to be you know, pre-K kindergarten, depending on when you start the child. Uh, but it does take you into beginning grammar, noun, verb, article, adjective. So if you're not starting your child with pre-K, it can certainly uh, serve as kindergarten and first grade for your child as well. Uh, generally then first through fourth grades are going to be covered in our language arts kit B. And so while your child is in math kit one, they're probably going to go through two different uh, language arts kits then. Uh, now, if you already have decimal material, our Math Kit 1 Basic may be a great option for you. And then the Fractions Kit, that's going to be for all ages. Oh, the Fractions, by the way, that is another material where the child is going to be, you know, doing that coordination with the two hands, crossing the midline, bringing those down. Um, so that is another material that will in engage in a similar way. Math Kit 2, uh, the pouring that they are doing with the uh, three-dimensional shapes in Math Kit 2, that's going to be another wonderful crossing the midline activity for the older <laughs> kids, as is the construction of the three-dimensional shapes that we'll, they'll make with the... Um, the shape net. And that's to take you all the way through pre-algebra. So Schiller Learning is going to give you that excellent, solid math, math foundation for pre-K all the way through pre-algebra. And with the language arts, again, that solid foundation, uh, pre-K through fourth, and then they're gonna move on to, generally most of our families move on to either a literature, or writing-based language arts at that point. And we can help you, by the way, if you're you know, done with the pre-algebra and math kit two and ready to move into high school level math and would like help making that selection, give us a call and we can help you based on you know, what your child's um, math experience has been, what they wanna do after high school, their personal preferences, we can we can help with those um, selections. And were there any questions that we did not get to during the presentation? Yeah, so crossing the midline, it's funny. Um, when I had first uh, encountered that years ago and just seeing the brain science behind it and the impact that it has and that, you know, if your child is not able to do that, it can be, you know, an indication that there's retained primitive reflexes and Retained primitive reflexes are actually not a good thing. <laughs> uh, and, you know, if you want to work with an occupational therapist, if that's something that your child does have. And so, by the way, if you see that your child is having 
a, um, a difficulty crossing the midline and fluidly doing those activities. And that continues after you've given it some uh, focus and attention in a very positive, encouraging, um, non-issue sort of way, you know, it may be good uh, to go ahead and just have them evaluated uh, to make sure that there aren't any issues there. And working with your occupational therapist in conjunction with them, uh, if, you know, your child does have, you know, one of those special needs that affects that, uh, working with them uh, to improve that crossing the midline function. Okay, excellent. Well, it, oh, wait, hang on just a second. Oh, so for a 13 year old dyslexic, uh, dysgraphic, working with spelling and grammar, you might like the, uh, the language arts kit B as a supplement. And so with Montessori, I love how Montessori does the, the spelling and reading very holistically. So that as a child is learning to read certain groups of words, certain letters, certain sounds, uh, learning that, okay, these, this letter grouping makes this specific sound, they're, to read it, they're also practicing spelling it. And those activities actually build each other. And um, a traditional approach of learning to read is decoding phonics, which phonics is very uh, prevalent, very strong uh, phonics understanding in Montessori, but they're more encoding to read than decoding. And that is where they're with the movable alphabet practicing spelling words as they are learning to read them and they are encoding those. And with that color coding for vowels and consonants, by the way, they will make a movable alphabet in their own handwriting in Language Arts Kit B. And with that color coding for vowels and consonants, the vowel patterns really pop. It's a great spelling manipulative and the grammar symbols. Now, sometimes, uh, you know, for a, a child of that age, really depends on where they're at with um, oh, excellent. So the family empowerment scholarship. So we are available through the family empowerment scholarship through Rainbow Resource. Uh, and then we are working with Step Up for students to be uh, relisted individually again. And I would love if you could send me your uh, email address. I would love to connect with you. Thank you. Just, um, just for your contact there. Um, we've had some, uh, just a, a little difficulty connecting with the exact right person. <laughs> But you were able to order it directly through. I mean, we're definitely approved for reimbursement. So if you purchase with your family empowerment scholarship, you'll get reimbursed. But you can also order it through their portal through Rainbow Resource. Um, I know they've had a lot of uh, changes in the last couple of years. And then the grammar symbols, those are going to be uh, wonderful for helping that grammar to stick. And you can get uh, the grammar symbols individually, or, you know, you can use them. Uh, they do come with the kit. With the Language Arts Kit B Digital, that I generally recommend for using as a supplemental resource for someone 
who is 13, simply because uh, you've got printable grammar symbols, which you can print on cardstock. It's a, it's a good user experience. You can print, um, well, you would want to print multiple sets of those, but you can print a ton of them. And she could also uh, use those for art projects. I love the digital kits with their printable manipulatives because, well, actually the printable manipulatives, all of that same digital content you get with a physical kit, but you do also have the option of buying just the digital content. Uh, we like to do a lot of different art things with those uh, printable shapes as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so, and with the uh, grammar symbols, by the way, another thing that you can pair those with are sentence strips where it's like a poster board but it's just a long strip and write a sentence on there. So whatever book that your daughter is reading, she can randomly pull and copy sentences out of there and then pair that with the grammar symbols to identify all of the different parts of speech in the sentence. If, um, if she's having trouble identifying um, subject and predicate, one of the things you can do is cut those sentence strips diagonally where the um, subject and predicate meet and do a silly activity where you're randomly um, mixing up the subjects and predicates. And so that can be a fun thing that really drives home where those, um, you know, how those subjects and predicates are divided and how they're different. Yeah, so the, the language arts kit be digital is a nice um, cost-effective supplement. And, you know, because you wouldn't be doing the entire curriculum, a lot of it, you can just pull the instruction off of the, the screen from the PDF and just print uh, the consumable pages that she would be using. Oh, and it does also, by the way, still have all of those, um, the song downloads. And there are grammar songs in there as well. Which music, oh, and the, the Daily Homeschool Coach today uh, talked about one of the benefits of music in learning. Uh, but there are songs for grammar. Okay, awesome. I, it looks like we have covered all of the questions. So if you think of anything afterwards, call or email. We are always happy to help. Thank you for joining us today. We have a session um, Thursday evening, eight o'clock. Uh, this week we are focusing on special needs homeschooling. And so we're going to be taking a look at um, you know, additional things that we can be doing that are drawn from Montessori for um, supporting our special needs learners. Thanks, guys.